Afternoon folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd talk about today is the smudge pot. And I've had a lot of questions on my channel about how to keep bugs at bay around your camp and things like that. You can keep bugs at bay a little bit while you're walking around if you use chemicals on your clothing like permethrin and things like that or DEET or OFF or anything like that will help keep the bugs at bay. If you don't want to do that and you're trying to find something more natural, then you have to find things that are natural insect repellents in the wild. Yarrow is a very, very good natural insect repellent that's very prolific in eastern woodlands, especially in fields and meadows along the wood line. And that's going to be your biggest problem with trying to find stuff in the wild that will help keep bugs at bay because most of the stuff that's really insect repellent grows on edges and in fields. It doesn't grow in the woods necessarily. Okay, so we're in the time of year now when the yarrow plant is actually dying off. And you can see here's one here that the leaves are rotting off of, the flower tops turn brown, and the leaves below are still green in the rosette. There's a small leaf there. But you're going to find these along field edges and things like that. You're not going to find things like this very much right in the woods. That's one of the downfalls of medicinal plants and things like that, edible plants in general, is that most of them will grow the best on edges. Now, smoke of any kind will keep bugs away, and we're going to talk about making a smudge pot today to keep the bugs away, or at least keep them at bay when you've got the smudge pot near you. The problem that I see with most smudge pots that I have seen discussed in books and videos is they really don't talk too much about burning anything in them other than the ember and keeping the ember going like with dung or something like that to keep that ember smoldering, which is what you want a smudge pot to do, is smolder and not burn once you've got the initial fire inside that pot. But I think it's very critical for us to understand that if we really want to repel the bugs, other than with just smoke, we need to put some type of insect repelling material in there to burn as well. And that's where the yarrow comes in. And sometimes you just got to have possum mentality. If you're walking around and you come across an edge or a field or a clearing or an opening, and you find those type plants, then you need to collect those type plants and take them with you. That's part of your possum mentality. Stuff it in your possum bag or your possible's bag or whatever you want to call it or in your fanny pack and take it with you. You can take raw yarrow and you can rub it on your skin as an insect repellent while you're walking through the woods and it will help to keep the bugs off of you. You can rub it in your hair and things like that and just take a big bundle of it just like this with the flower tops and just rub it on you. And that will help keep the bugs off of you because they don't like the smell of this yarrow and you can still use it later on down the line for a smudge pot but for the time being you're using it when you're in the woods as an insect repellent or you could make a tincture of this very similar to the black walnut tincture that we made and you could refine that down to a tincture after a couple of weeks mix it with some oil of some kind some light vegetable oil or something that will trap the liquid instead of letting the, everything evaporate off your skin and then put it in a spray bottle and spray that on you and that will work as well but if you don't have time for that kind of stuff and you're on the fly you don't have two weeks to make a tincture while you're you know, in the woods, then you can take the plant directly and rub it on you. Wax myrtle works really well down south, and there are other plants that are insect repelling or have insect repelling properties to include tobacco. Most people who smoke don't have to worry about bugs too much because if they're smoking, the bugs don't get around them. Same thing with your campfire. As long as you're burning that campfire, the bugs aren't going to be around you too much. So what can we do in our camp close to where we're going to sleep to help repel bugs after the fact. Well, we can use what's called a smudge pot, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, like I said, burn something in the smudge pot besides just something to hold the ember. Have something in there like this yarrow that is insect repelling to begin with, and put that in there. So what we're going to do is, to make a smudge pot, we just need some type of can. Now this one is one that I scrounged actually out of trash. It's an aluminum cream container. It has a logo on it. and to make a really effective smudge pot, you really need to poke holes in it so that air can get in it, so it gets a little bit of air, but not enough to combust on fire. I don't. I have a big problem with punching holes in solid containers. It's just not my way. I would rather fight this thing a little bit and hope enough oxygen gets in here from the top than to poke a hole in a perfectly good container that I might need later on, especially if I found this in a true survival situation. And actually, this did come out of a trash pile and this wire, and I just punched holes in it with a fence nail and bent the wire over with a multi-tool. So this complete container was made from trash. But I sure wouldn't want to sacrifice this thing just for a smudge pot. So we're just going to leave it as it is. 
And what we're going to do is, I've got some green grasses here. And this is the only time I would ever recommend putting green grass in a fire. Would be if you're trying to make it smolder. And then we've got our green and brown yarrow here. We've got some green at the bottom, but the flower tops are mostly dead. Some of the leaves are dead, and some of the stalks are dead as well. And we've got a mixture of that. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to, and this is not something that's going to burn for you probably all night long. It's going to be something you're going to have to babysit, maybe sleep a couple hours, wake up, get bit, babysit it again. It's going to work like that. So all we're going to do is we're going to take some tulip poplar bark here real fast, and we're just going to shred it up to make our initial fire in the bucket, basically. And this doesn't have to be anything spectacular. At night, if we were getting ready to do this, what I would recommend is just scrape some coals right out of your fire bed and drop them in the bottom of that thing, some red-hot coals. Because we don't have that, we're actually going to have to start somewhat of a fire. Now, you see with this tulip poplar bark, all I really did was shred up the base of it and wad it up. And if I've got the ability of having open flame like a lighter, that's really all I'm going to need to do. I can hold that flame on there for just a few seconds. And this stuff will light up. And then I can just drop it in the bucket and put small sticks and things like that inside the bucket to feed it. So that I'm basically building a fire inside this bucket. It's not going to be a raging fire, obviously, because there's no oxygen getting in from the bottom. So I'll have to keep giving it oxygen. To make it burn and I'll just fill this with small sticks let it burn down to an ember and then we'll work on our smudge and the goal right now is just to get all of this to burn down into embers down in the bottom of that bucket once we get that part done then we can work on the smudge okay now I'm going to show you a quick trick here maybe it's just a safety tidbit whatever the case may be when you have a fire contained like this, obviously you really want to get oxygen to the base of the fire. Blowing down on top of a fire blows the fire out. Blowing underneath the fire is what gives it oxygen to sustain itself. You're going to have times that this is going to drop down. And you're going to want to put oxygen in there. But you don't want to blow directly over the top because if it flares up, it's going to burn your face. If you blow over the top of it at an angle, you're going to create a vortex of oxygen inside that container that's going to go down to the base of the fire like this. Now you see how high that flame got from that additional oxygen. And again, now we're just burning and building up embers right now. Okay, so remember, we talked about dung as being one of the best things that you can put in your smudge pot to hold that ember or to keep it from flaming up. And that's because you're cutting off the oxygen supply because it's compressed. And that keeps it from catching fire. If you bust that thing up, it's going to flame, just like a cattail. If you keep a cattail together, it will only smolder. So what else can we use if we can't find dung? What we can do is we can find a hollowed out tree like this. It's rotten out. And we can assume that inside that tree there's going to be some debris in here. And if we grab just any kind of a digging stick of some sort, like one I've busted off right here, and we shove it underneath that stuff, it's going to be compressed. You see those chunks of compressed material that are a little bit wet and a little bit damp, like that with some leaf matter in them? That's just as good as manure. Okay, so now you can see we got a pretty good little bed of embers in there. Okay, so once I've got that ember bed built up in there, now I'm going to put my ember holding material, my dung, my slightly wet mound of ground up dirt from the ant nest in that tree where it's rotten out underneath that trunk there. Whatever the case may be, that's what I'm putting in next. I think you can see that down there in the bottom. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take either my green grass, depending on how much coals I have in there, or just the material I'm going to use for the smudge itself, and that's what I'm going to put in, flower tops down, and spread it out a little bit to give it some oxygen, but not too much, just like that.
Okay, I've had this thing sitting here burning now for a good 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to let it burn for at least 20 more minutes so you guys can get an idea of how much smoke is being generated from this over time. Unfortunately, I can't sit here for six or eight hours, but I think this will give you the idea if I wait a few more minutes. Okay, guys, so here we are at about 40 minutes. Still smoking really, really good. I have no doubt it's going to go on for another hour or two if I leave it alone. But I wanted you guys to see what this looks like. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about the smudge pot's location in our camp, and that's an important thing to understand. We have to realize that the smoke is going to be dictated by the wind. So on a calm night when the bugs are the worst, it's not going to be too much of a worry for you. You can get this thing pretty close to your shelter where the wind is blowing it into your tarp if you're sleeping on the ground. It'll convectively roll around in there, smoke rises, so it's going to go above your head and keep the bugs at bay fairly well. If you're in a hammock, you can drop the sides of that hammock hammock tarp down a little bit, put this thing in the middle, crawl in there, and let it go up, fill up the top canopy of your tarp, and then go out on the ends, no big deal. The key with this whole thing is, is remembering that fire is so important, because without fire, you don't have this. That's why fire is number two on the list of the five C's of survivability, because something like this can be a lifesaver in a situation like the Everglades or Alaska or some of the northeastern states where the bugs are really, really furious, something like this can save your life, not only physically from disease, but mentally and psychologically as well, just from sitting there getting ate alive by bugs all night long and not being able to get a good night's sleep. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for all my sponsors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back to another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.